We got Desert Storm, the Ground War Days 4 and 5. Battletail, I'm guessing this is where it'll come to an end. Honestly, it's been an absolute slaughter. I'm not surprised in the size we're coming to an end, but yeah, let's jump straight into this. As the clock ticks through midnight into day 4, the US armored divisions continue their advance east, pulverizing the Tawakauna Republican Guard Division with few losses. The armored Literally fist punch none. that began with the Battle of 73 Eastern yesterday has broadened into the Battle of Norfolk overnight, with hundreds of Iraqi tanks destroyed. Over the hours of the early morning, the American tanks continue the tactic employed thus far, to use their superior range against the Iraqi T-72s to keep them at arm's length while destroying them. Honestly, like, their tanks compared to the Iraqis' tanks is just mind-blowing. The fact that they can be so far away and just absolutely destroy them and they can't do nothing about it, oh, it's... Bro, honestly, it's just a slaw. It actually is. A brigade of the Adnan Republican Guard Division of Motorized Infantry moves south against the US 1st Armored Division overnight and wounds 23 American soldiers with artillery fire. The Adnan are motorized. Wait, and wait, wait. That's the most damage they've done, right? Wounded 23? Is that the most they've done moving, damage? As their vehicles are mostly made up of trucks and light armor. They are attacking to slow the 1st Armored Division's advance to give their comrades in the Medina Republican Guard Division to the east more time to set up defensive positions. The US MLRS batteries launch a devastating counterattack of cluster bomblets in return. Throughout the night, there we go. using their night vision optics, yep. the entire battalion of Apache attack helicopters and Air Force A-10 move in and rain hell on the Adnan division from above. Bro, they've been doing it time and time again. Iraq should literally know what's coming at this point. Within a few hours, their resistance has ceased, and the hastily organized Adnan division dissipates into the night, with those unable to escape surrendering. Behind the Republican Guard, the coalition air forces continue to hammer Iraqi commandeered vehicles retreating from the Kuwait theater along what would become known as the Highway of Death. Throughout day that three highway and four, is mad. the Iraqis have been setting fire to the Kuwaiti oil wells as they retreat. The burning oil causes a massive environmental disaster in the area. Wow. Despite the Iraqis believing that the rugged terrain south of the Euphrates... That right there is literally like, oh, we can't have it, no one can. You know what I mean? Like, they know, they know they're know they going out. They know they're losing. They know they're going to have to surrender. So they're just burning it. You know? It's too difficult for an armored division to negotiate. The 24th Infantry Division reached their objective, securing Highway 8 east of where the 101st had done so a couple of days earlier. They blockade the highway, destroying over 100 vehicles retreating westwards. Bro, with another highway of death? Hey, listen, Iraq, listen, listen. When you see they've done something one way, right? Don't go the other way, man. You gotta go through the fields or something. Leave the highways alone. Tank and tow fire. Bedouin nomads, watching from atop a nearby ridgeline, politely applaud as tank rounds hit their targets. Despite Jesus. being slow out of the blocks, the Egyptian, Saudi, Syrian, and Kuwaiti armored divisions of Joint Forces Command North have carefully advanced into Kuwait against concentrated Iraqi defenses. They have successfully destroyed multiple Iraqi frontline divisions and advanced northeast towards Kuwait City itself. The Arab forces of Joint Forces Command East also advance towards the city. The 1st Marine Division sets its sights on the Kuwait City International Airport and the 2nd Marine Division moves towards the west side of the city to cut off any vehicles still retreating. Yo, they could just walk in at As this point. As the sun point. rises, at 6am, the 1st Marine Division's task forces Shepherd and Papa Bear, who had held off a fierce Iraqi counterattack two days earlier, breach the airfield perimeter and advance across the runways towards what's left of the hangars. The fight that they had planned for never materializes. US battleship gunfire bombardment and airstrikes have reduced the airport to ruins, and the area is deserted of Iraqis. Oh wow. A US and a Kuwaiti flag are raised over the airport, but after consideration of political etiquette, the US flag is lowered. Demonstrating excellent political Bribe. awareness, General Schwarzkopf orders all US Marines to halt their advance into Kuwait City itself. He knows how important it is to the people. America was just getting a little bit too carried away there, but you know, they, 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 they took it down. That Kuwaiti forces advance into and liberate their own capital. At 9 a.m., Kuwaiti troops enter the suburbs of their beloved city. With the liberation of Kuwait City in sight, the other coalition war goal to eliminate the Republican Guard as an effective fighting force in the region is on. Is there any laugh? 
With the battle for Objective Norfolk ongoing to their south, at just after midday, the 2nd Brigade of the US 1st Armoured Division edged forward in the haze towards the Medina Republican Guard Division. I got a question, right? At this point, moment in time, are the, uh, is, are Iraq not communicating with each other at all? Like, j just a little focal. Oh, yeah, we're a little bit screwed over here, man. Uh, yeah, everyone's down. You, you, you're pretty much the last men standing. Uh, you may as well surrender. You know, just, just that little phone call will, you know, go so far with, you know, they don't have to lose any more lives than uh, they've already lost, so. With the tower counter nearly finished I don't off, see why they're still fighting the at this point. the Republican Guard Division swept aside earlier. The Medina Division are now the last organized force to stand up to American armor. Yeah, why? Well, there's no the point. Behind the Medina lie seven Iraqi no logistics point. sites for the Kuwaiti theater. To the rear and left of the US 1st Armoured Division is the 3rd Armoured Cavalry Regiment of 18 Corps, trying to catch them up on the outside with the 24th Infantry Division. Poor positional coordination between 7 and 18 Corps results in gunners from the 3rd Armoured Cavalry mistaking the rear of 1st Armoured for Iraqis. Oh no. A brief friendly fire incident results in one American killed. Oh my god, they... Honestly, friendly fire, I, you guys were telling me in the comments, it happens a lot more than I thought anyway. So unfortunate, but they've genuinely done more damage to themselves with friendly fire than the Iraqis. They actually have. Air strikes harassing them. The so Medina have been slow and disorganized in arranging their defensive line. Some units are still pointing southwest, expecting a coalition thrust from the area of the ongoing Battle of Norfolk in that direction. As the 348 Abrams tanks of the 1st Armoured Division approach from the west, the Iraqi troops are using the false safety of overcast rainy weather to eat a lunch of rice and tomatoes with a distinct lack of onions outside of their vehicles. In a similar- What is this thing with- that, They genuinely was transported onions. <laughs> and that's why I emphasize the lack of onions because they took the onions, bro. <laughs> Her tactics to the Tower Cowler yeah. Division yesterday. The Medina's tanks are waiting on the other side. No wonder they're losing, man. They ain't got no onions, bro. ...side of a small hill, ready to hit American tanks as they crest it. But they've made a critical error. They have failed to verify their exact distance to the crest of the hill, and are entrenched out of range of it with their T-72s. Oh. As the American tanks in the center and left flank crest the hill, their commanders begin to pick out targets through their thermal imaging sensors in the Merc. At 12.17pm, the first rounds rip into the unsuspecting Iraqi T-72s. Bro, they don't even have to go to the point. Like, like they're just... It's just practice. They can't even fight back. They think they can fight back, but they can't even fight back because they're not even in range for their tanks. Like, bro, come on! The American <laughs> commanders calculate what that they, they are beyond the range of the enemy tanks, and so halt on the high ground. The Iraqis, scrambling into their tanks, helplessly return fire at the muzzle flashes in the mist, their rounds falling short of the American line. For the next 40 minutes, the engaged elements of the 1st Armoured Division simply sit there picking off Iraqi tanks and armoured vehicles with impunity. Jesus. The Iraqis desperately call in artillery support, but the rounds fall behind the front line of Abrams tanks. Without any real way of knowing where the rounds are landing, the artillery continues without correction and misses. Oh my god. The 75th Field Artillery Brigade and the 1st and 25th Field Artillery Regiments respond. Using artillery acquisition radars, the US artillery is able to detect the firing of an Iraqi artillery piece, pinpoint its exact position, and return counter artillery fire on it before the Iraqi round has even landed. <laughs> Within just a few minutes, two entire artillery battalions of the Medina Division have been wiped out and the US artillery can focus its attention on the Iraqi armor. It's literally just a skill issue north, right now. The 24th Infantry Division begin a similar attack on the Jabbar and Talil air bases, defended by the significantly weakened but spirited Nabushad Nazar Republican Guard Division. 40 minutes after the battle began, the Medina's right flank has been completely destroyed, and the right flank of the American force is just beginning to smash into the Medina's left. In this sector, Many Iraqi tanks are pointing southwest. The nearest tanks are destroyed before they can even rotate their turrets towards the Americans. Those that do fire back find that they are again. Yo, how quick and just how like outskilled they're getting on, like, bro. It's just honestly, what is this?
what is this? Why did they not surrender on day one? Like, why, why even? Like, bro, they warned you to begin with. Get your warning and just go. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you didn't have to do this. Then outranged. Scrambled air power is now arriving to expedite the destruction. Apache attack helicopters come to hover just behind the front line of Abrams and Bradleys. Bye bye. They launch Hellfire missiles over the heads of their bye comrades bye. into the enemy. A-10s also arrive overhead and pummel Iraqi vehicles just outside the range of the ground forces. In the midst of the carnage, General Franks, commander of 7 Corps, flies to visit Major General Griffith, commander of the 1st Armored Division. However, the pilots of his helicopter get lost, and they fly over the Iraqi line. His helicopter flies from the Iraqi lines towards the US line. With his Black Hawk equipped with stub wings and external no. fuel tanks, in the mist, they could easily have been mistaken for a similar looking Iraqi MI-24 oh, attack wow. helicopter. It's a miracle that neither Iraqi nor American air defenses open fire on him. Wow! The battle would become known as the Battle of Medina Ridge. It lasts just two hours, during which- I really thought it was going to get shot down then, or the helicopter. I, 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 was, I was thinking maybe the helicopter attacked like the front tank or something, but there was no way that would happen. Because like the helicopter would not. But yeah, that, wow, I'm surprised, yeah, crazy. 186 Iraqi tanks and 172 armored vehicles are destroyed. Four American Abrams tanks are lost. After action reports conclude most likely to Iraqi tank fire, but that friendly fire by the Apaches can't be ruled out. After the All right, so they lost 300 vehicles, including tanks and armored vehicles, and the Americans and everyone else lost four vehicles, four tanks, but they're not ruling out friendly fire, so let's be honest, half of them are going to be friendly fire, right? The war, Colonel Montgomery Majors, the commander of the 2nd Brigade of the 1st Armoured Division, would pay tribute to the bravery of the Medina Republican Guard Division. These guys stayed and fought, he said. In the afternoon of Day 4, both the Tawakauna and Good Medina guys. Republican Guard Divisions are now effectively destroyed. The Adnan, Nabushat Nazar and Al-4 Infantry Divisions are routed and retreating. The avenue to the coast is now open, and the race is on to cut off these three divisions and the Hammurabi Armoured Division before they can make their escape north of the Euphrates. Yo, I, I ain't gonna lie, mate. You, you may as well just save your energy. You're screwed. You might, you might get away with this. You're... Bro, you gotta put some turbo on. You're screwed, mate. <laughs> Airstrikes involving A-10s and four Apache battalions of the 101st Airborne are directed against all of them to try to slow down their retreat until 7 and 18 Corps, now struggling for fuel with the very long supply routes from Saudi Arabia, can arrive to destroy them. Wow. The bombing and killing is merciless on the retreating and disorganized Iraqi forces, both in eastern Iraq and at the Highway of Neth. General Schwarzkopf and President Bush in Washington agree that to continue the killing for the sake of killing risks the coalition losing moral authority on the world stage, okay. not to mention the psychological effects on their troops in the merciless killing of those who can no longer fight back. Right. They begin to discuss- Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna say it right now. They wasn't even fighting back on day one. Like, they, they had a projector there looking like they was gonna fight back, but bro, it, <laughs> there's no difference, man. Them getting away, Right, like this, they've got it. That's more fight back than they've done the whole entire time, bro. I ain't gonna lie. There's no difference. And prepare for a ceasefire. In the meantime, 7 and 18 Corps continue to chase east towards the coast, attempting to envelop enemy divisions. Further south, having completed their objectives ahead of schedule in the afternoon, 7 Corps Commander General Franks had planned for the British 1st Armoured Division to head northeast into the area of the fleeing Republican Guard. But after another friendly fire incident this morning, where gunners Again? from the Queen's Royal Irish Hussars were wounded by tank shells of the US 1st Infantry Division, he makes a political call. More British troops have regrettably now been killed and wounded by US friendly fire than by Iraqis and parading the British 1st Armoured in front of the exhausted 1st Infantry Division is likely to result in further tragedy. Yo, America! America! What are you doing, man? We have died more to you fighting beside you than the enemy?
Um, America. Come on. You guys are doing it on purpose, aren't you? You guys are doing it on purpose at this point now. Accepting a change in orders with good humour, General Rupert Smith relays Frank's instructions to his troops. Advance east and cut off any further retreating Iraqis from Kuwait City at the coast to the north. Refusing to once again be shot at by allies, <laughs> the British crews hoist Union Jacks and regimental colours atop their vehicle. <laughs> like their predecessors in North Africa, the desert rats race across the desert. Hey, listen, listen, we got, we got to tell everyone we're in the United Kingdom now because we're getting shot by our, our allies here. We, we got we to gotta have it in their face. This is us, man. Thousands of flags fluttering in the wind. Looks the US cool, Air to be Force fair. is caught off guard for a special mission planned. It was their intention to dispatch F-111s to Baghdad in a final attempt to kill Saddam Hussein himself. But the war is coming to an end far sooner than anticipated. On Wednesday afternoon, a C-141 delivers a pair of 4,700 pound GBU-28 bunker-busting bombs, which are swiftly loaded onto the aircraft and sent out. The GBU-28 have been crash-developed over the last six months. The two delivered are still warm to the touch from the molten explosive material poured in by the armourers in Florida just hours earlier. At 8pm, the two F-111s scream over a bunker complex northwest of Baghdad and drop their large bombs. The first misses, but the second penetrates into the underground bunker system and kills everyone inside. Oh wow. It turns out that Saddam was not present. Oh wow. While the F-111s were en route, General Schwarzkopf leaves his war room to host a press conference to the world media. For the first time, he explains the coalition's war strategy and progress up until this moment, and reports that the gates are closed to Iraqi forces retreating north. As the coalition ground forces are still racing east to try to cut them off in time, what he means is that he believes that air power alone is slowing the retreat fast enough that Seven Corps will eventually get there in time. Unfortunately, this isn't the case and the Adnan, Nabushad Nazar, and Al-4 divisions and the remnants of the Medina escape over the Euphrates throughout the night. Oh, they all got away. Seven Corps continues east into the following morning, destroying straggling units, seizing logistics areas, and rounding up prisoners of war. At 8 a.m. on the 28th of February 1991, the fifth day of the Ground War of Desert Storm, a cessation of hostilities order is sent to all coalition forces. The Gulf War is over. Wow. Over the coming months, after the euphoria of victory wears off, questions will be asked about the decision to cease hostilities so soon, and whether the imagery of the slaughter south of Basra and the highway of death would have been worth the strategic war goal of destroying the Republican Guard for good. But the primary war goal for the 35 nations that mobilised against Saddam Hussein was to rid Kuwait of Iraqi forces. Thanks to an elite display wow. of generalship by Coalition Commander General Norman Schwarzkopf and the hard work, dedication, bravery and sacrifice nah, of kingdom. the armed forces that stood together, the Kuwaiti flag rightly flies over Kuwait City. Hell yeah. Wow, incredible. Absolute slaughter. Really good video. Enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. The whole series is on my channel if you missed any part. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.